Hello again and welcome to Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. It's great to have you along here on our season finale as we talk Cowboy basketball. Well, since we visited last, the Cowboys finished up their regular season. A game on the road, a couple of home games, and it all kind of capped off with a big win last night in their season finale on senior night, uh, Josh, Josh Adams night here in the beautiful arena auditorium with a win over San Jose State. That's the way to finish up a regular season, don't you think? Well, all three of these games were really illustrations of how this season has gone. A new team built completely different than our last four. Josh Adams would put this team on his shoulders so many nights. A four-minute timeout in all three games, San Diego State, UNLV, and then, of course, last night's a game against San Jose, nobody knows. Reporters can't even write who's going to win the game. And that was an illustration of how this entire season went. Uh, thank goodness it ended with a resounding victory uh, for Josh and his family. I, I wanted that game and that victory more than any game that we've played in the five years. Yeah. Josh Adams will become the single season all-time leading scorer at the University of Wyoming as he passed the great Flynn Robinson with 28 points in that game over San Jose State. And it really is amazing just how close, win or lose, all season long that this new Cowboy team has played these games this year. Well, we talked earlier in June and July when we were just setting the table with these guys and getting to know all the new players. The biggest worry and concern was, what are we going to do on those eight or nine nights that we just absolutely don't show and get mauled? Because that's a tough you know, locker room talk. We didn't have to go there. Um, we had two runaways, Colorado State victory, Utah State victory, and we had one disappointment the last four or five minutes at Boise when they knocked in late, I think it was five late threes. Besides that, every game was a grind, maybe not shy style in the past, 53-51, uh, but nonetheless, just like this last game, Josh Adams' last game, some heroes right down the home stretch, Naughton with a big second shot and dunk. McManaman with yet another game winning charge. And then what can you say, vintage Josh Adams. Well, number one, you want to win the game, coach. But do close games like this, uh, tough nail biters, help this new team going into the Mountain West Conference? They've been there, kind of done that. Does it help them? I don't think it hurts. I think it would be far more pleasurable if it was 80 to 40, at least for the <laughs> old coach. Uh, but I do think this. I think our guys learn grinding is important. Finishing games is important. And then if we reflect on last year's run in the tournament, all three were of the same. So let's hope we have another run left in us. It really is amazing just what uh, Josh Adams has done for this Cowboy basketball program, isn't it, Coach? Well, it, it, it's threefold. You know, it starts off the court, doing the right things and being a good leader off the floor, in the locker room. Then it extends to the classroom. This guy's going to graduate with a 3.0 in criminal justice and have that cap and gown. And then last but not least, what can you say? We turned the ball over to him this year to be a point guard with a brand new team. He had never played point before. I'd say he got an A-plus in that category as well. He's just been outstanding. Will you stay with us? We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're coming back right after this timeout. Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Shiat is brought to you by Wyoming Relay, the University of Wyoming Outreach School, the University of Wyoming International Programs Office, and your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. Well, he played his last game as a Wyoming Cowboy right there on Maury Brown Court here in the beautiful Arena Auditorium just last week. He has had a phenomenal Cowboy basketball career. Our own Kevin McKinney had a chance to sit down and visit with Josh Adams. Blasts into the forecourt with it. Gets it to Adams for a left-hand jam. Here's a turnover, and here's Adams the other way for the jam. with the dunk, and he's fouled. I've asked you this before, but when did you realize that you had these gifts, especially that you could fly? Um, 
Uh, most of the gifts I have now took a lot of hard work and uh, haven't really developed until this year. Uh, ball handling, court vision, jump shot, but uh, I really started jumping high about my sophomore year in high school. Uh, it was my brother's senior year. I always had to follow him, and he was always a high jumper. And uh, everyone always asked me when I was going to live up to that hype. And uh, sophomore year, it just started happening. So did you you didn't really do all that much jumping, or did, was there a, a period of time you go, holy cow, this is... I, I got something here. I was a I was a pretty slow grower. My brother had a, a big growth spurt. I kind of just grew steadily. So my sophomore year, I was about 5'9". Uh, so I, I could jump, but couldn't really get up by the rim. And uh, it just took one dunk and warm-ups of a summer league game. And then I uh, just went up from there. You are one of the greatest competitors I've ever seen. I've been around forever. Uh, where did you get that competitiveness, do you believe? I think it runs in the family, uh, especially uh, in our family immediately. You know, our game nights get a little competitive, uh, even joke telling. You know, you always want to win. Uh, and, you know, if someone else wins, you're happy for me. You don't really say much, but down the side, you really, really wish you could have came out with a victory. So uh, I think it's a family thing, and it's just something I've always grown up with, watching, you know, my six uncles, uh, my cousins, my brother, my dad, my mom. Uh, everybody's just been competitive, so that's just how I thought things were. Adams in the lane. Spinning, Adams off the glass, and a foul! You are got to be one of the hardest individuals to guard uh, in the country. I, I was curious, is there anybody in this league or anybody that you play that actually did a pretty decent job in your mind could guard you? Um. Yeah, there, there's a lot of good players in this league, and uh, a lot of teams have gotten some good game strategies to kind of slow me down, and it's worked uh, for some of the games. But uh, as far as an individual standpoint, I think uh, Patrick McCall from UNLV, just with his his quickness and how long his arms are, and he's got quick hands, uh, he's always caused a little bit of a little bit of trouble for me up there at the top. Uh, he's a great player, a great defender. Who uh, is the hardest for you to guard? Oh, that's a tough one. Uh, you know, Scott from CSU has unlimited range, uh, so you know you always got to be on edge for that. But as far as a complete uh, player, I'd have to say Marvell with his size and his ability to get to the rim and finish. And then uh, if he gets hot, it's, it's lights out. I mean, we saw a, a perfect example here in the first half when we played him this year, uh, shooting a three ball. And then when we were at Fresno, he got to the hole almost at will. So uh, just his dynamic ability is pretty tough. You know, Josh, you have. Uh an unbelievable career here and, and uh, the numbers are amazing and I know that doesn't mean as much to you as the victories and the team thing but do you think there's going to be a time when you look back and say wow I I did pretty well I think there will be uh, hopefully sooner than later um, because you know it's been a great four years from here and it's something I'll never forget uh, but like you said I, I like the, the team accolades a lot more but uh, once I'm gone from this place, uh, unfortunately, pretty soon. I think I'll be able to look back and say that uh, I left a pretty decent legacy and I, I did everything that I could and I, uh, something I could be proud of. What are you going to miss most? Uh, the, the coaching staff. Uh, Coach Shah has developed uh, me as a player, as a person, as a man. and uh, He's another father figure to me as well as a best friend. I could come to him about anything. We joke, we fight, you know, but uh, that, that bond has always been there. And then also just the, the great guys that they bring in year in and year out. Uh, we never have any bums, never have any jerks. Uh, you know, I always enjoy spending time with the guys in this locker room. Uh, so I think it's more the people uh, than anything. Well, we hope you've enjoyed the first part of our interview with Josh Adams. Stay with us. We have more to come with Josh right after this timeout. Automatic bid on the line here for the Cowboys. For the lead of three. Do you kind of have games stand out? Certainly a tournament. But are there games in particular that stand out to you that, uh, you know, and not, maybe not even necessarily all your 30 point games, but, uh, but do you have those kind of memories? I do. And actually, I think some of the more memorable games have been 
games that I haven't had a ton of points in. Uh, I think it was like my sophomore year. It was the first time we beat CU here uh, when they were ranked. Uh, we beat San Diego State when they were number five in the country. And uh, you know, both of those times the courts got rushed, you know, and that's something I'd never experienced before. Uh, one of the games, uh, it's actually like my favorite picture of all time, is uh, the court got rushed, I think it was CU, and two fans just randomly picked me up in the air. And it was just shocking to me because I didn't have the greatest game ever, but uh, I played decent, and uh, I think that was a pretty iconic image that will stick with me forever. And then uh, the San Diego State beating the number five team in the country. Uh, how many people can get the opportunity to say I beat number five in the country? So, you know, those two games are probably the most memorable outside of the, the tournament run. You know, uh, the, the team went into the tournament with a certain mentality, I assume. Um, do you feel that same mentality going into this year's? And, and can you help that since you experienced that? I can't speak for the rest of the guys uh, right now because we're not there yet. And uh, we still have one more game before we get there. But, uh, you know, my mentality is the exact same. Uh, I got a chip on my shoulder, just like that team had a chip on their shoulder. And uh, we know what we're capable of and not many other people do. Um, so I think if we, if we can get all the guys to buy into that system and have confidence, then there's, there's no way or no reason we can't uh, make another run at this thing. I know you've analyzed this, but uh, I've never seen a Wyoming team down the stretch of every game, always in the game. have won a few, have lost a few. Do you analyze what might have been the problem or what you could do better down the stretch to turn some of those very close games into wins? Uh, yeah, we, we've analyzed this a lot and uh, actually talked about it a lot this week. Um, actually, one of our other guys asked our coach, you know, how do we get over this hump? So we, we spent a decent amount of time in film the other day, uh, really just showing what we needed to do. And uh, down the stretch, uh, it's just making those winning plays is what we call them. Those are charges, 50-50 balls, free throws. And uh, most of the games will do one of them or two of them, but not all three. And uh, in order to get over that hump, you have to have the, the sharpness of mind to do all three of those things. And uh, if you do that and have high energy for 40 minutes, uh, then, then we're going to get there. Do you ever get tired? Um, I do get tired, but you know the coaching staff does a great job of you know getting timeouts to the right spot, uh, getting me short breaks uh, in there, and honestly the adrenaline's so high. And like you said, uh, I'm a very competitive person, so I kind of fight back against being tired and uh, try not let try to not let that defeat me. I think uh, of all the years I've, I've been here, and I think about six seniors last year graduating. I've never seen one guy with more pressure on him coming into a year than you've had. And I know you'd say, well, I sure wanted to win more games. But I, wouldn't you, even you, who don't like to do this, but you'd have to say that you've done a tremendous amount to help this team, this program. Uh, how, how Could you speak to that a little bit? I, it was a lot of pressure, there's no doubt. You have to be proud of yourself, in other words, that you were able to handle that and perform as well as you did. Do you feel that way? Uh, yeah, I do. And I think I put a lot more pressure on myself at the beginning of the year uh, than I have down the stretch. And I uh, got a little bit frustrated early on. I struggled early on. And, uh, you know, it's been a, a long learning process. And I've had a lot of support behind me with, uh, you know, the coaching staff uh, helping me to find out how to lead these guys. And then these guys never given up on me as a leader. Uh, and vice versa, I've never given up on them. And, uh, you know, it, it's taught me a lot. And, uh, you know, I am proud of what I've been able to do, but more more so what these guys have been able to do this year. And uh, most people would look down upon it or not think we've done a lot because of the record. But uh, these guys have come leaps and bounds. And in two years, three years, maybe they're going to be another team like we had last year, if not better. Uh, and I just wish I had more time with them. It really is amazing how Josh Adams has transitioned, how his role has changed here in this his senior year, and well, what a leader he has been. Let's look back at his development, Dave. When we fell in love with Josh at, at summer camp, it was some of the sensationalism as a wing player, his athleticism. But his development, and we talked about off the court and in the classroom earlier, but his development from a wing athlete 
to become not only a ball handler, but a guy that could organize a group who could win a championship with adults and veterans, and then a guy that could develop and set the table and be a good example setter for a brand new team this year, uh, that just doesn't come uh, easy. In 40 plus years of coaching, I'm not sure I've ever seen a guy work harder to do the right things. And it starts and ends with his family. They are wonderful people, high values, they kick it in gear, and we never wanted to restrict that which he had, meaning the passion and how he wears that on his body language, but what we did want to do is make it even better, and I think Josh has done a splendid job for four years. Well, his teammates talk so much about, uh, everybody, you, the coaching staff talks about his work ethic and just how hard he goes at it. He really is a great example. He is. and. Like I said, that transcends what has happened to our program. Six freshmen, six sophomores. Now Josh leaves the program, but hopefully also leaves a legacy of ado. Aggressiveness, a lot of discipline, more than anything unselfish. He was a giver. He gave to Wyoming. He gave to these young guys. And who knows, maybe down the road as they develop, we're in that championship mode once again. Well, you bet. Cowboys off to the Mountain West Conference postseason tournament. Josh Adams was the MVP of that tournament just last year when the Cowboys won it all. Well, stay with us. We have more to come on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. We're back right after this. Inside Wyoming Basketball with Larry Shiat is brought to you by Wyoming Relay. The University of Wyoming Outreach School. The University of Wyoming International Programs Office. And your Magnificent Seven Wyoming Toyota dealers. Well, the Wyoming Cowboys are in Las Vegas. Tomorrow, they'll play their first game in the Mountain West Conference postseason tournament. That's kind of Wyoming's little playground. It certainly was last year as the Cowboys won that tournament. So now, you go back to Las Vegas as the defending tournament champions. I like the ring, the sound of that coach. That has to give this team a little bit of confidence, I'm thinking, going into it. Well, playing in Vegas in Thomas Mack yet just a week ago probably helps the new players. Certainly with the experience we had last year, the table set. We don't have to show them or talk about a dream or some vision like it happened. And so why not and why not us once again? No, it's not easy, but it wasn't easy last year, Dave. Three last second victories to get to the dance. And so I think we know what we have to do. I think we're rested. We, yes, we lost a lot of veteran players, but you know what? We're playing nine or 10 per half. So hopefully a little more stamina. This new Cowboy team has gotten some experience. Uh, not so new any longer, Coach, as you go into this tournament. Huh? There's a lot of experience even with these young guys. And a lot of good games on the road, yeah. really tough finishes, some record-setting games on the road. Denver hadn't beaten 13 years. New Mexico hadn't beaten in 13 years. New Mexico State never loses. And then, of course, what can you say about five straight wins against CSU? So we probably won just enough. There's no fear for these guys. Yeah, and it's uh, so much fun. I know they're excited about this uh, this format. It's one and done. It's survive in advance. Then you have prepared yourself for this style, this format, with a couple of tournaments. Uh, the way you set up the schedule this year, I think, is will help the Cowboys in that regard. Well, we did practice back-to-back -back Christmas in a tournament. Mm -hmm. We knew that would be important. And then, you know, we talked to the team after the San Jose victory the other night. Look, guys. It is an endurance test, but it can be done. And piece by piece, you only focus on the next game. Trust your staff, your assisting coaches will pick out what they think they need to for the next game, and we'll proceed. Do you approach this tournament as being wide open, which it appears to be? I know San Diego State is the favorite going in. They're the number one seed. But, Coach, this conference has been kind of up in the air all season long. Well, nobody has been without perfection. Mm -hmm. Nobody. And so with that said, yes, San Diego State selected well in advance to be the veterans, the guys who had already won the championships, and that fell in place. But in a tournament, anything can happen, as we found out last year as the 4-5 game seed. So you know what? We approach it the same way we have all season long, and hopefully we grow up and we run the table once again. 
you know, kind of nice having that last Saturday off. The Cowboys were the only team that didn't play on Saturday, the way the schedule worked out. Do you think that helps going into the tournament tomorrow? And how are the Cowboys physically going in starting tomorrow? Well, you never know if it's going to help. I know one thing for certain. It definitely will help Mr. Adams, number 14. Mm -hmm. I mean, we've rode him pretty hard. 38 and a half minutes a game, I believe, leads this league and is top five in the country. So we will be rested. We will play nine or ten and a half, and hopefully we give it our best shot. Oh, it's going to be a blast. And it has been a blast all season long right here on Inside Wyoming Basketball with head coach Larry Shiat. Many thanks to Root Sports. And, of course, many thanks to our great crew. Just been outstanding all season long. Thank you so much, Coach. It's been a, been a lot of fun. We'll come back next year and do the same thing, okay? For the head coach, I'm Dave Walsh. So long, everybody.